we go again with monthly questions from supporters. First one, and across the social spectrum of media, any more players coming in before the end of the transfer window? Um, as with any good manager, and obviously Paul, Paul's one of them, um, he's, he's, he's looking at a number of different players. Um, I think we've said consistently that the, the, there is still some manoeuvrability within the, the playing budget. Um, and there's no one imminent. There's no, no one that a deal's about to be done, but we've got a bit of time. Um, Paul's still looking, and, and obviously there's no bars to him bringing in someone else. Tom on Twitter asks, how are we with season tickets at this current time? Season ticket sales are over 11,065 now. Um, still trickling in a few each day, so hopefully we'll get to just short of 11,100, um, which is slightly down on last year, but last year's figure included half-season tickets. So hopefully if we do half-season tickets again, then uh, we'll be getting there or thereabouts, hopefully beat last year's figures. You must have read the third question. <laughs> Because <laughs> Lou, Lou on Instagram says about half time, half um, season tickets, and of course, it's the things we've done them some years, haven't done them other years. So, what, what's the plan for this year? Uh, it's, it's one of them things. A, a lot will depend how we're going. Really, um, I, I like half season tickets. I think they make a great Christmas present for people, um, and at least you know that that you've, you've got that money in the bank as such. You know, and people are not going to start missing games because obviously they've they've purchased a, a season a half season ticket. So. My gut instinct is to do a half-season ticket, but as I say, a lot will depend on, on how we're doing. If we're selling out every game and we're flying high at the top of the table, then you don't want to be butchering your, your actual match day revenue. Around this time, there are always particular players who seem to be linked to clubs. and Ruben Reid has been a, a, a name that has cropped up all the time over the last past few weeks. Yeah. Dan and Harry on Instagram say, can you confirm or, or deny or, or just put to bed the speculation? I don't think you can ever put to bed anything in, in football. Um, all I can say is we're not really... I don't think it's correct to comment about a player that's currently at another club. Um, but, yeah, listen, he's a good player. Now, across social media, again, there's been some confusion over the, the television coverage and where they're doing it from. It, it started off OK, but now it, it's been moved back down to the lower, ang lower angle. Can you, um, can you sort of enlighten people on that? Yeah, I can. We um, during the summer we had a full structural survey undertaken of of the TV gantry um, for the first game of the season. As you're probably aware, Channel Five came. They, they saw no issues. They went up there. There was, you know, never never voiced any concerns with us. Our own analyst um, and our own camera crew, as you've seen on the on the Pompey player highlights, they they are up there with no issues. But on the day of the game, Sky went up there and, and for whatever reason, um, just said that you know they didn't didn't feel it was it was safe up there. Um, obviously, and, and you can't force a cameraman to go up there if if he he's not feeling safe and secure. Um, subsequently, we were having another survey done, um, and any issues that Sky have got or now subsequently Channel Five have got, then then we'll be addressing them. The, the header is in. Well, I thought Brands had gathered it, but McGurk puts Portsmouth ahead talks about past players but probably that's that's that wasn't in your domain but what about sell-on clauses for the players now in the future because uh, you you might have noted that Andre Gray for instance has just earned Luton about a million pound with it with his move on <laughs> yeah and yeah. so you know it, it, it's something worth having at the end of the day yeah I mean all any player sales we've had or, or, or players that have left us we always try and build in um, obviously add-ons and, and sell-ons that's that's what you do as a matter of course but anything prior to the administration you know um unfortunately that money goes to the administrators lee on facebook asks about capacity um capacity as um at the last sag meeting um we we've satisfied every condition that the the, the safety advisory group asked of us um, and we're literally now ticking boxes, getting certificates. Um, and I'm, I keep saying it, but I'm hopeful in the next few weeks we'll have capacity back up to over 19,000. Right. Completely changing tack now. Ollie says about the, fr the Fratnen clock, is it ever going to be reinstated? I, I, sadly, I, I, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult one, the Fratnen clock. I know it's, it's got a lot of emotional um, ties t to Pompey fans, and rightly so. You know, I've seen a lot of pictures with it, it looks great up there. But unfortunately, again, during administration, um, I believe that, that a company was repairing it. Um, 
didn't get paid and, and they're keeping hold of the clock. Um, that's that's issue number one. Issue number two is if we get a new clock or we, we manage to get that clock back, it's the upkeep of the clock. It's in such a difficult um, and dangerous area for it to be serviced that any time there is an issue with it and certainly installing it is going to cost us a lot of money. Roy on Twitter, obviously thinking back to the Madness concert, saying, have you got any more plans in the summer for another one? Um, we've, we've got no plans in concrete. Um, it's something we look at. Um, Madness was quite unique um, in that there are probably not going to be that many bands that we could safely say at uh, £30 pound a ticket, we're going we're gonna to sell out a 13,000 crowd. So we've got to take that into account. Um, it put a lot of stress and strain on the club as a whole. I think people are now still suffering from it. You know, as, as you well know, that first few weeks after the season ends, that's normally the time people have a bit of a break and switch off. And we didn't have that this year. And, and the staff, you know, fair play to them, work through that. Um, flip side, it did generate quite quite a few um much needed revenue for the club um but then again you could flip it back the other way and say that um the the, the pitch obviously we couldn't play our pre-season games on the pitch um and it, and it delayed any work that we was having done on it so there's a lot of pros and cons in having a concert i'm the firm believer that you know that, that if we can get one on let's try and do it but a lot will fall back to a band that's going to ignite yeah. you know the enthusiasm of of fans that we know that we're going to be able to sell out because if we don't the, the margins are fine you know at thirteen thousand, we turned in a healthy profit at ten thousand, we'd have been struggling to make a profit mm -hmm. so you've got to add all that up really johnny it's, it's been no concrete decisions taken is the honest answer well, yeah. and let's finish on a on a sort of current topic tonight's game against reading um healthy crowd expected yeah, I've just um, just checked. It's was it half one, two o'clock now. We're at fifteen and a half thousand tickets sold, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I think justifies our pricing policy for the game. Um, it could have gone dearer, but we'd have had less people, you know. And and this is a great opportunity for people that maybe wouldn't normally come and watch a game can come down watch us against a very good team in Reading. And and as I say, fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully we can progress to the next round. Currently, if you look out the window, <laughs> it's raining down cats and dogs. Any contingency plans for that? No, the, yesterday, as you know, um, the weather was biblical, is what I've been... You're, you're in Spain, oh, so... You, you, oh, you... Oh, right, Johnny, you didn't need to say that. <laughs> I've flown back, you know, I only went for a couple of days. Um, and I've flown back for tonight. Um, no, I was from what I was told, the weather was literally biblical torrential rain um and yet the, the pitch drained um and and the ground staff were out there cutting it this morning um no no puddles no wet patches um as we're speaking now uh again you know that the, it's quite firm underneath and and good to go Brilliant. thank you, thank you.